Library of Ona has 10 floors available to play, with each floor having a unique playstyle suited to the character representing them. Your strategy against the enemy will change depending on which floor you choose, and so too will your builds. And when you get to emotion level 5, with that final BGM playing as the last pages are being chosen to win against that boss you fought for hours on end, there is no better feeling. That's when you realize that all the time spent on making builds was worth it, and that all floors in this game play in such unique ways, which makes you want to master all 10 floors out there, just to see how differently you played the game with them. But I mean Yasan's floor, which means the highest number I could count to is 3. So screw uniqueness, fun, and any unoptimal playstyle. Which is why I plan to rate all the floors in this game, judging them, not based on the content of their character, but based on how high they could roll die. Listen, the best kill is overkill, and this game makes you the Spartans and the enemies the Persians. So let's get into the 100% optimal library of one of floor tier list. Now to start the overview of the first floor, we need to change locations real quick. The destination is hell and the patron librarian Malkuth, with Mean Glow being in close proximity to it. This floor is all but burning your targets to the point where you wonder how you got into the triple digits of it. The enemy doesn't matter. Oh, the Endure Slash? Burn. The Endure Pierce? Burn. The Endure Blunt? Burn. Do you take no damage from Burn? Sacrifice Philip. If you see it, you can melt it with varying degrees of heat and effectiveness. The BGMs are rapid hip hop because you spit fire with this floor. At the higher emotion levels, you gain access to a nuke, which will cause a fire to envelop half the library. But being an arsonist is fine as long as you look cool committing the crimes. This is the floor of history, and you're in saline, with everyone else being a witch. All in all, this floor is an A because seeing burn sacks in the hundreds makes me feel like I did something with my life. To get to the next floor on this list, we need to take a trip to the local zoo. The exhibit is where Harambe died and the patron librarian is his son, Yasad. Now I hold zero bias, but this is the best floor out there. If you've ever wanted to channel your inner Joe Rogan, rip your shirt off, showing your hot dog nipples to the world, and then start running to choke slam the nearest child, then this is the floor for you. If there's an enemy you have problems with, then the objective is blunt, the question is blunt, and the answer is blunt. Seeing a plus 20 Psalm Lament Blunt Eye will put hair in your chest and testosterone in your cereal. And if the enemy dares to be resistant to Blunt Eye? then that just means they take more damage to it. Ironically, it's a floor of technological science, but no other floor will lower your IQ like this one and make you return to being a Neanderthal. The BGM is Donkey Kong 64's OST. But even if by the end of the game you look like King Kong and own a solemn lament body pillow, then just know you had the privilege of never thinking and still finishing the game. An easy S. For this next floor, we need to ascend into heaven and meet the angel up there, Hod. Just like the angels in the Bible, when the enemies dare to look at her, they will start bleeding through their eyes. Making crispy nuggets in Malkuth's floor may be fun. However, bleeding enemies so much to the point where you make a Goranjor question their life decisions is without an equal. Using this floor optimally means making Berserk's gore scenes look safe for children. You will stack so much bleed to make the enemy's AI second guess attacking you. If the enemies don't lose 3 gallons of liquid when they attack you, then something's wrong. Whenever a guest is invited, pack a raincoat because the battleground is going to be a splash zone. At the end of the fight, a minimum of 3 hours should be necessary for cleanup. This is the floor of literature, and just like in murder mystery, shit's gonna get messy. The BGM is Stormblood's OST and the enemies are gonna get butchered, just like Bleed did after it was nerfed. An A for the voice of an angel. Now we must take a trip to Ireland and go to the local pub. This is where we'll find Netsack with a blood alcohol level of 99%. If Yasad's floor simps for blunt, then this floor deifies Pierce. The goal is Pierce, the fallback is healing, and the reward is Jack Daniels. If you aren't increasing the surface volume of the opposition, then something is going wrong. His page is centered around staggering because he wants extra time to drink. The BGM is Ireland's national anthem, and the drip is sponsored by Bud Light. This is the floor of art, and the exhibits are made by Vlad the Impaler, a based B for Budweiser. The next patron librarian will be found in the local orphanage, watching Madoka Magica. This is Tipareth. At one point she had a brother. Now she'll make all the guests share the same fate as him. The theme is 90s magical girls anime, and if the enemy ever laughs at that, show them this is what the first girl transforms into. Her floor plays just like her life, solitary. The goal is to debuff everyone else on the floor, including your allies. Just remember, having a librarian die is bad, but on this floor, it's optimal. The goal is to have our allies representing your brother, because that is the win condition. When Tiff Zodi is activated, it won't take long for the enemies to meet a knock in the afterlife. You may be giving a child a mental breakdown, but you'll hold the W by the end, so it's a win-win. This is the floor of natural science, just like how our brother naturally passed away. The BGM is Ibs OST, and just in case your allies are taking a bit too long to move on, then... Eh, some pages exist to speed up their passing. An A for a dead knock. The next location is a local rock concert, and here we'll find Gebra, and Mio actively stalking her. Now, Tipra sees her allies as soon to be a Nox, whilst Gebra sees them as walking buffs. To build this floor, you need Gebra's page and mountain of corpses. You'll want to keep your allies temporarily alive, so killing them will give you much more buffs. When she's solo, all enemies will look like the head after they raid a lobotomy corporation. Plus 10 dice power is a natural sight for her. If the enemies don't die before I can make another joke about Tipra's dead brother, then something's wrong. Her color name was a red mist, because that's what the enemies will look like after a clash. This is the floor of language, and the only thing I speak about is dead enough. The BGM is Guilty Gear's OST, and the fantasy is getting to play as the red-haired Dami Mommy. An easy S for greater split horizontal. 
Now we must head to a Starbucks because the barista there is the next patron librarian. His name is Chesson, and yes, you should be questioning your heterosexuality. His floor is all about working together because remember, when you murder as a team, that means you have an easy scapegoat in your allies. He also has a couple of references to the Wizard of Oz. By that, I actually mean all of his pages are a reference to it. This man is all about making coffee, being calm, and orchestrating first degree murder with the boys. If your allies die, don't worry, we can bring them back and rat them out to the cops later. All the enemies need to look like Julius Caesar because we are collaborating for these kills. This is the floor of social science, and murder is socially acceptable in the library. The BGM is the Wizard of Oz's soundtrack, and just like how the Wizard of Oz abused its cast, he'll do the same to the opposition. An A for uh, coffee, please? The next location is a local tea shop with a book club in it. Here we can find Benna drinking tea as she speaks her monologue to the other members of the club who are too afraid to talk back to her. Her fighting style is but hitting the enemies before they can do anything, just like how she speaks before you could even get a word in. Her time as an arbiter puts her brutality equal to everyone else in the library. She may act normal, however that twinge of psychopath will find a way to rear its head. And kind of like Amber Heard. Whenever an attack is landed, you see a smile. And she brings a Polaroid camera, taking pictures to then hang up the aftermath of battles as decorations. The goal isn't a decisive victory, it's a long one. This is the floor philosophy, with the question being just how crazy is this bitch? The BGM is lo-fi beats to drink tea and torture people too. Also, she prefers to aim for the kneecaps. To watch the enemy suffer. An S for suffering. Now we must go to Kanda Post. This priest just had his Ezio are coming. And there is Hakma, as he makes love to his iron body pillow. Hakma's floor revolves around blocking damage, but he can't block the truth of I not loving him. The goal is to take no damage, the reality is death. Your death. His floor would be effective if he didn't use an iron body pillow as his shield. We try to give him armor, but nothing could get him out of that limited edition iron merch. The reason the library is in the red is because he keeps donating to Ayn's Twitch account. Let that sink in. He's donating to a dead man. He even bought Ayn's drip too. All that's left for his cosplay is the hair dye. He made a pixel account just so he could see, um, cultured images of Ayn. Every hour he refreshes the page to see if new artworks got uploaded. The only time he tried in a reception is when a guest said Ayn was a bitch. In that precise moment, not one second later, he synchronized with White Knight and tore the guest in two. Since then, his librarians have been wearing Ayn merch out of fear. He has the Ayn Day 50 video by Project Moon set to open by default when he goes into Chrome. The BGM is You Are a Giant because it's loosely related to Ayn. This is the floor of religion, with the religion being Ayn and the non believers are purged daily. A C for cock. Because he likes dick. Now for the last floor when he's ahead to McDonald's to see the mascot, Ronald. Just like McDonald's, his floor makes the enemies always frozen, never fresh. You may think killing enemies that can't fight back is cruel, but Ronald has as much love for life as a McDonald's employee. If the war crimes are getting to you, then just imagine all the enemies of the Hamburglar. Then you'll be able to sleep at night. And if you don't want to kill the immobile, just tell him his workers are looking to form a union. Then he gets serious. This is the floor of general works, and they are generally encouraging the loss of human life. The BGM is Persona 3, because the main theme of this floor is also death. An S for cutting workers' a salary. Well, that's a tier list. Without a doubt, Harambe-san has the best floor in the game. Followed by Gebra and her fan club consisting of Mio and Tanya, Benner and her tea shop, and Ronald with his underpaid workers. All playstyles are valid, but making it so your enemy plays for the shortest time possible is still the best strat. And that's why these four floors are in the S tier because they can bring the enemies to a knock the fastest. And as we know in a tier list, every letter below S is worthless, like Hakma. So I won't care to explain their placements, but they're there because one thing holds them back, or because some brain power is required to get the most out of those floors. Whilst Ungabunga Yasad just needs a blunt die and you win. The only floor that isn't valid non-modded would be Hakma's. Nobody wants them, especially not I. Well, that's pretty much it. Let me know which floors you think are the best. And if you disagree with my 100% correct opinions, then you will be added to the ban list. My mods will find you. If I had any mods, that is.